Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now here, paying for funerals is driving families into debt. That's the warning today <clears throat> from a committee of MPs which says that the average cost of laying a loved one to rest is now £3,700. The Work and Pensions Committee says means-tested benefits do not come close to covering even a simple funeral and urges the government and undertakers to get together to make the numbers add up. The government says it's modernising the benefits so it will be fairer. But Jane Deeth reports on the families struggling to afford a proper send-off. Yeah, it's a, a good turnout. Yeah, he did like it. Hmm. When Liana and Stevie Mayhew's father, Clive, died, they couldn't afford to bury him. They had to leave him in the mortuary for a month while they found the money for a plot. We did feel like we'd, we'd let him down, very much so. Yeah. And it, it would have been nice if we could have laid, laid everything to rest and done him proud sooner. Liana doesn't work. Stevie was only earning £200 a month as a cleaner. They applied for the government's funeral payment to help those on low incomes, but they were refused. I thought we'd get help from the government because I'm, I'm on a minimum wage, like, um, part-time job. Like, I would have worked full-time, but obviously where I had to, like, look after my dad, I couldn't be working full-time. Stevie was told he didn't qualify because he didn't claim benefits. He and Liana had to take out a £1,600 loan for the funeral. With interest, they'll pay back a total of £2,500 over the next year. It's hard to survive anyway without having to pay money that I was hoping to get help with. More than half of those who apply for government help with funeral costs are turned down. For those that do qualify for the funeral benefit, the government will pay the cost of the burial plot or cremation fee. But the amount for other expenses, like storage of the body and the coffin, is capped at £700. And many people find it just does not cover the cost. MPs heard from families denied their loved one's ashes because the benefit didn't cover the undertaker's bill. In Western Supermare, when Mr Nye's wife, Victoria, died, he was awarded £1,700. But some undertakers were quoting him £5,000 for a funeral. He was looking at going deep into debt to pay for it. My first reaction was, oh, wow, how am I going to pay that? There was lots of things going through my head. I lose the house, lose the car. Undertaker Nigel Groves offered Mr Nye a no-frills funeral. There was no choice of coffin, no order of service or flowers, but it was within budget. Because there's no regulations in the funeral profession, what's happening is companies can basically charge what they like. If you have a funeral that's costing £5,000, I know that that funeral, in reality, is costing them less than £2,000 to provide. I was overjoyed with that because Everything was done with dignity. Everybody sort of um, made it a good day, or as best as it can be. There. Rightful place. <laughs> Today's report says the government should negotiate with the funeral industry on a reduced price for a simple funeral. And then it should raise the benefit cap in line with that price. The National Association of Funeral Directors says the fastest rising costs, cremation and burial charges, are outside its control. It welcomed improved bereavement benefits, but says it's worried about a national fixed price for funerals. Increasingly, people have to be creative to make a funeral affordable. Today's the day Justin Marriott says goodbye to his mum, Linda. I don't think I've had time to grieve yet because I've been busy sorting everything for the funeral, so... Justin paid for most of the funeral on his credit card, but he raised the rest through crowdfunding. As well as paying their respects, Linda Marriott's friends are helping pay for her funeral.
They're united in one common purpose, to say our goodbyes. A lot of the community, a lot of people who we've not spoke to for years, put things in from as little as £10 up to, we had people putting in £100. I think we raised nearly a thousand pound from that and a lot of people said they're going to bring cash on the day as well so that was a massive help. I reckon we should do that, we should cut out enough to, to cover the edges. In a front room in Suffolk, Virginia Coyle's family are all getting involved in an unusual but very personal project. Oh that's wonderful Jessie, thank you. Oh. Virginia's mother is in a hospice. When the time comes, they're going to take the funeral into their own hands. Ribbon effect over here. I'm sure that for m some families, a funeral director is the answer and they give a good service. I just know that we don't have that, the kind of money that it would cost today to bury my mum. She's going to have her mother's body at home until the funeral. I have found out and bought some special ice packs so that way you can keep the body cool enough not to um, deteriorate. The Coyle family feel being so involved will be a comfort but a do-it-yourself funeral won't be for everyone. Most of us put our faith in funeral directors and hope they'll do our loved one proud. Jen Deeth reporting. I've been